Okay, maybe you have left dentistry and medicine and you're starting a side gig. You're a coach or a consultant and you've noticed that this new business that you're building is likely just as stressful as the one you just left behind. Hmm. If that's true for you, then you're going to want to listen up because that is exactly what we're talking about today. How stress can follow you. And actually, stress itself is an inside job. Hello, and welcome to the Business of Happiness podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Taryn McCarthy, and today is going to be such a good day as I'm sitting here. It is a winter wonderland outside my window. I wish I could show you how gorgeous. We had a beautiful snowfall last night here in Maine, and everything is just covered with snow. Everything is so beautifully lined and gilded with this beautiful, precious, pure white snow. It's absolutely beautiful. And it reminds me of calm. I mean, if you've ever walked or hiked in snow, you know how calm and peaceful it is. It's almost like the snow absorbs the sound and you're just in this beautiful cocoon of calm. There's no outside sounds of cars anywhere around. Everything just feels really precious and almost frozen in time. So, so wonderful. And it's actually perfectly fitting for what we're talking about today because what I want to share with you today is a very real sense of leaving one profession, one job, because it's so stressful and overwhelming, if that's ever been an experience for you, and saying to yourself, look, I've got to go somewhere that's not this pressure and stress all the time. And then you go to the new place, guess what you feel? Pressure and stress all the time. So did you leave your last job or maybe your profession because of the burnout and overwhelm? Because the grass seemed so much greener on the other side and now you're beginning to realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm feeling that same old devil on my shoulder, stress, overwhelm, burnout. You know, I took a bath a couple weeks ago. I take them often now, but I, a couple weeks ago, I took a bath in the middle of the day. This one was in the middle of the day. And I actually enjoyed it. Do you know how groundbreaking that is? <laughs> and if any of you are listening to this thinking, oh my gosh, taking a bath in the middle of the day sounds like the most stressful thing ever. I'm right there with you because I used to feel that same way too. In fact, I remember hearing myself say, you know what? I've got so much to do and now I have to also squeeze in personal care, self-care. Now it felt like pressure. Self-care felt like stress. Like I had to somehow squeeze it in and then there was pressure to feel good about it. I didn't even like pedicures because they weren't fast enough. In fact, every time I ever went for a pedicure, it was not for the enjoyment of it. I never chose the extra massage <laughs> or the extra long experience. I just wanted to get the job done. Put the paint on my toes because I have to look a certain way for an event. It was never an experience of pleasure or fun. It was just a job to do. So I couldn't wrap my head around taking the time to do something so frivolous. Well, let me go back to this tub. I was lying in the tub, listening to music, burning some candles. And now, by the way, I know why people do that. I'll come back to that as well. And I was relaxed. I was calm. It blew my mind. That experience of slowing down enough to be calm and enjoying it blew my mind. And the most incredible thing happened when I was feeling and enjoying this calm in the bathtub in the middle of a weekday, guys, literally the middle of a weekday, the most incredible thing happened. I suddenly had this creative download of an entire brilliant 
workshop. That, by the way, will change your life. And I'll tell you about the workshop later on in the episode, because this episode is all about the calm. The point is the brilliance and the visionary you is waiting on the other side of calm. It's so fascinating because we have been entrenched in medicine and dentistry and business and society and our education system to believe that effort and force and hustle and get it done and overwork and over prepare and over stress and over worry and over achievement is the formula for success. And it makes so much sense that your nervous system is activated when you put it in a place of calm. It makes so much sense. I mean, have you ever been in a situation where you're maybe daydreaming, just feeling really good, staring at the fire in the fireplace, and all of a sudden you get this intense rush of, oh shoot, I got to get up and do something. There's something that's not being done right now. And then you find something to do, even if it's on the weekend, you're like, oh my God, I got to get to the dishes. This old paradigm of hustle and force and overdoing and overstressing is embedded in you because of years and maybe decades of practice, decades of habituation of stress. So it makes so much sense that if you left one profession of stress and overwhelm and having identified that the paradigm that was established in that place, maybe it was pressure to produce production goals, or maybe it was the stress that other people in the environment were placing on you where you just were not aligned with them, or maybe it was being forced to, I don't know, put something out there that you didn't feel good about and you identified that and you thought, that's the thing that's causing me stress. And you went somewhere else and you thought, oh, creativity, support, really doubling down on my zone of genius. Now I'm going to use this beautiful nugget that actually lights me up to share with the world. And you feel like, oh, this is a bigger purpose. Now I found my calling. This doesn't feel like work. And then all of a sudden, you wake up one day in this new profession, this new job, and you realize, oh, the stress is back. I'm feeling just as pressured and overwhelmed as I did in the last job. And maybe that refractory period is a little longer than you're able to have awareness of. Maybe you were in a little honeymoon period of this new job, but now you're beginning to see evidence of it again. And that same feeling of, oh, this new situation, I, I don't have this stress, but I do have this one. And it feels just as heavy and overwhelming. And of course, it makes so much sense that you brought the stress with you from one job to another, maybe a different color, <laughs> maybe a different name, maybe a different persona, but that feeling of burnout and overwhelm and needing to overdo all the time followed you. And it makes so much sense because if you haven't addressed that, it wouldn't. It wouldn't change. This paradigm that we've been brought up in, in our education system, and specifically in medical and dental school, of not being enough, not being good enough, constantly chasing better, better, better. I mean, let's face it, in dentistry, there's no such thing as perfect medicine either. In fact, perfect is not possible. And yet it's something we aspire to all the time. We're constantly chasing perfect. And so, of course, Coming from a place of lack and scarcity, you're going to feel not good enough. If you've established for yourself, I'm not a good enough dentist. I'm not a good enough boss. I'm not, a good in I'm not as good as she is. I'm not as good as he is. And that constant comparison, that persona will follow you into coaching or follow you into co consulting. And so many people profit off of this. That's why in social media and marketing, we see it all the time. And maybe if you've been marketing, you've played into this tactic as well. 
of eliciting and highlighting lack and scarcity and playing on our fears of not being good enough to sell what you're doing. How often do we see that? Your dentistry is not good enough. That's why you have to buy my cone beam. Then you'll be really good. Ooh, you're right. Maybe I'm not a good enough dentist if I don't own a cone beam. Your leadership is not good enough if you don't buy the software that helps manage all your team. Ooh, maybe you're right. There's something inside me that feels not good enough as a boss, as a CEO of this beautiful business, but you're right, that software is going to do it for me. And so we buy, we spend money, but it doesn't take away the stress and it doesn't take away the lack and scarcity because the lack and scarcity follows us. Just ask yourself for a moment, did all that fear and stress and not feeling good enough suddenly disappear when you bought that cone beam or that 3D printer? <laughs> did it all disappear when you bought that intro oral camera? Did now you suddenly feel, no, it keeps going. We kick that can down the road. We keep feeling not good enough. The same thing happens in coaching and consulting, except now we do it from a place of you need this coaching program or this certification. And I'm asking you right now, if you are a coach or consultant, how many certifications is it going to take for you to finally feel good enough to let that stress of lack and scarcity and insecurity finally lift. I have news for you. It's an inside job. It has absolutely nothing to do with gaining anything outside of yourself. And it could be as simple as you have attached the two concepts of success and stress to one another. It could be that simple. And so many of us have this experience of when I force myself to sacrifice my health, my well-being, the relationships in my life, when I force myself to really just knuckle down and work 17, 20 hours a day, then I see success. Will that work? Absolutely, that'll work. But here's my question. What is your definition of success? Huh, it's a whole nother conversation. What is your definition of success? If your definition of success is making the most money possible, well, guess what? There's only one way to do that. And that is to work 24 hours a day. I mean, really, that's it. I mean, even the most successful, yes, you can hire people and you can delegate. And these are all great CEO qualities and definitely ones we should all be incorporating, but will there ever be enough money? Could you become the most efficient CEO and will you ever have enough money if your definition of success is more money? What is the definition of more? Or is your definition of success actually building a beautiful business that is in service to others from a place of calm, feeling the way you want to feel during the day and avoiding that stress and pressure and overwhelm. Now that's a totally different business. That's a totally different business model. And that requires a completely different skill that nobody taught us in dental school. Nobody taught us in business school. Nobody taught us in parenting. We've attached success and stress. And so even when you start dreaming of success in this new business, immediately there's a little tinge of, oh, shoot. But if I'm too big, how much overwhelm am I going to experience? Am I right? Maybe in your coaching, you've been thinking, oh my gosh, I love coaching and I love serving other people to be their very best, but man, do I really want X number of clients because that seems like a lot of work. And so we subliminally sabotage ourselves because too much success feels like too much overwhelm only because we've attached success and stress to one another. But here's the brilliant gift of this episode, my friends. You have the power of neuroplasticity. 
we can rewire those connections in our brains. This is science. We don't have to believe the attachment of stress and success that we've been entrained in and that we've been entraining ourselves in for decades. We get to step out of that old paradigm and be open and available to something new. We can choose calm. <sighs> Did your head just explode? Yes, in any moment in time. We get to choose calm. The truth is, you can have success and grow a beautiful dental practice, a beautiful medical practice, a beautiful coaching practice, a beautiful consultation practice, and not burn yourself to the ground and experience calm and joy and levity every single day. And here's the interesting thing is, it's actually required of you. Because when you're in a stress state, you literally cut off your connection to higher executive functions. It means you literally cut yourself off from being a CEO. When you're in fight or flight, there is no possible way of reaching creativity. There's no possible way of reading for ingenuitive problem solving. There's no possible way to reach for human, true human connection when you're in fight or flight. It's not possible. Your body isn't designed to do that. And it's so interesting because some of us have heard ourselves say, oh, when I'm under pressure, that's when I really produce. And of course... Of course, that's the story you're telling yourself because under extreme pressure and high stress, guess what we become? Hyper-focused. So if you have a singularly focused task, putting extra pressure on yourself, yeah, that's going to get the job done because it cuts off all the other executive functions. It cuts off your ability to understand time, evaluate time have proper perception of time, that's when we get into a black hole and we get down into the work and we look up and it's been three hours. Guess what's happened? You've cut off your executive function. So of course, hyper-focus will show you a small amount of success, but now imagine what would be possible if you weren't in a stress state and you could have creativity and the benefit of perspective now we're talking true CEO. The CEO is the visionary. See, what we got wrong in medicine and dentistry is we became the widget makers instead of the business owners, the visionaries. And many times we tried to hold both things, but it's not possible when we're under such stress. And if our old narrative has been, I have to work hard, it has to be hard work, which means uncomfortable, not joyful, uncomfortable. If that is the narrative, I just have to work really hard. And if your idea of discipline is forcing yourself to do something as opposed to holding yourself in a place of beautiful accountability, then of course it's going to feel stressful and overwhelming. And of course, the minute you start dreaming about this beautiful new business, this beautiful new opportunity, Stress is going to attach itself. What you've been doing is saying to your mind, show me examples of success and stress. The moment you attached the two of them, you gave your reticular activating system information to start deleting all other options. And now you just start noticing all the businesses and all the people and all the friends who give you evidence, see, they're doing it. See, he's working six days a week. See, she's working 12-hour days. See, every one of my friends, we all complain about how hard it is. You become more and more aware of the reasons to believe that stress has to be linked to success. I have an interesting assignment for you, should you choose this week. I want you to tell your mind to simply show you evidence of enormously successful people who did so with ease and calm. I want you to give challenge your mind 
I want to see success that looks like joy and fun. I want to see success that looks like calm. Do this experiment this week because what you're going to be doing is giving your mind an opportunity to actually show you something else because all you've been doing is deleting the opportunities of seeing anything else other than your old story and your old paradigm. So give yourself that opportunity. Show me businesses that are growing with ease and fun. You'll be amazed at the podcast episodes that pop up for you. You'll be amazed at conversations that suddenly develop with friends when they say, oh, I just did this thing and it was so easy and fun. You'll be amazed at conversations in Facebook groups that suddenly show enormous success with ease. You'll be even amazed at opportunities you see in your own business for growth with ease and simplicity and levity and fun. So that's your challenge this week, is allowing for the possibility that success can come with calm. Success can come with curiosity. In fact, curiosity is how we get there. It's curiosity, holding on to that nugget of staying curious pulls us up out of stress. When you're curious, it brings an element of fun, an element of learning and excitement. Curiosity immediately raises you up out of stress and pressure. So let this be step one for you, just allowing it to be possible. Is there a possibility of something different from what my old programming has entrenched in me? And whatever you tell your mind, remember, this is one of the deep mind laws. Whatever you tell your mind, you will filter out everything else and you will see exactly what you're asking for. So let that be businesses that grow with ease and fun and calm. Step two Become very aware of yourself. Notice when you're sitting in ease and calm and your body says, oh, something's wrong. Introduce drama. Introduce pressure. Introduce stress. Notice the urge to introduce self-judgment when you're sitting in calm. When you find yourself in those moments of really enjoying a conversation with a patient and you think, Oh, shoot, I better be doing something. This feels uncomfortable. I shouldn't be sitting here enjoying this conversation. Just become aware. When you're sitting reading a book to your daughter to bed and you realize you suddenly start thinking, okay, let's wrap this up. Time to get her to bed because I got X, Y, Z to do. Notice the pressure that's happening internally. The introduction of stress in the moments that could be enormously, quote unquote, successful, making you feel really good. Just notice where your body is habituated to stress and sometimes even triggered by calm because it feels so unusual. And if you feel that, I have been there, sister. I know exactly what that feels like. I am sharing all of this from my personal experience. And here's the magic in step number three. Step number three is creating safety. See, because just because that little voice inside of you says, oh, stop sitting here by the fireplace enjoying this book. You should get up and make dinner or do something. Stop enjoying this conversation with your team member. You should be answering emails. The minute that little voice steps in and starts to quicken your heart rate, you get to choose calm. And you can start doing it right now in the job you're in right now. You do not have to burn it down and sell your job. You sell your business. You do not have to burn it down and give in your two-week notice. You can start introducing calm today. Calm is the inside job. See, burnout was happening inside of us all this time. Burnout was a choice. Oh, whoa, is that controversial? But I'm sticking to it. Burnout is a choice. Calm is a choice too. And of course, there are things that we can draw a line in the sand and say, I'm no longer willing to tolerate this. 
I'm no longer willing to tolerate working for a company that XYZ 100%. But you can't even get to that place if you're not in a place of calm. Because what your brain will tell you is there's too much urgency or lack. You can't leave this job because of X, Y, Z. Your financial situation won't allow you because of X, Y, Z. Am I right? So you can actually start introducing calm right now. But it does take you being aware of when your system gets activated and then the choice to introduce safety. See, because your brain and your mind is actually doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's asking you to survive. And you've told yourself over and over and over again, if I don't do this, I won't survive. I mean, that is literally what you've told yourself. If I don't learn to be better, my business is going to fail. If I don't pay these bills, I'm going to lose my credit score. I mean, I could... I couldn't even go to how bad that was. It's going to go where your mind takes you. But notice that the moment you feel that stress, it's because your mind is telling you, if you don't answer this email, your whole business is going to fall apart. And we have the power in that moment to be aware, oh, my system is telling me if I don't answer this email and look at emails right now, I'm going to be behind the eight ball and stress is, I'm going to increase stress and have no time for my kids tonight and I'm going to show up tomorrow at work and be behind again and, 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 and in that moment, you get to choose calm because there is no email that you've ever answered that instilled calm perpetually. Am I right? Was there one business decision ever other than choosing calm, that brought you sustainable calm. Maybe in the moment, but not sustainably so. Maybe you felt the joy and the excitement of buying that piece of equipment and in a moment, in a few moments, you felt like, oh, everything's going to be okay now because I bought that intro oil camera. Everything's going to be just fine. And then just as quickly, you introduce the next stressor. The only choice is calm. And every time you catch your body in that place of stress and pressure and overwhelm and you introduce safety and calm, you are going to be reinforcing a new paradigm because you've been teaching it the opposite for decades. So when you remind yourself that you are safe, that there are no urgencies, Ever, I know many of you want to argue that right now as I'm saying it, but there are no urgencies ever. There is never, ever a requirement of you as the beautiful business owner that you are that requires urgency, immediacy, never. There's always time to take a deep breath and actually call in calm. And I'm going to say it's actually a requirement for clarity, for new perspective. It's a requirement that we notice when our bodies go there and we reintroduce safety in the calm. See, because urgency robs us of perspective. Urgency robs us of clarity. Urgency robs us of opportunities that are not immediately within our very narrow scope. Urgency robs us of compassionate connection with other people. Urgency robs us of happiness. So those three steps, I'm going to review them for you again. One is giving yourself permission to just allow there to be a possibility. (laughs) I'm making this really easy for you. Could it be possible that success can be found with ease? Just giving yourself that possibility and asking your, your brain and your mind to give you evidence of it in this next week. All the beautiful, successful businesses that are run by a CEO who sits in her calm Okay, that's beautiful. That's number one. Number two, noticing in your own body when you feel stress and urgency, lack, not good enough, self-judgment, 
pressure. And step three, in those moments, reminding yourself that you can choose calm, that you are safe in that moment, that there is no tiger chasing you down, that that was just what you had associated with with emails, with expectations of others, with urgencies that other people have been putting on you, but that they're not real. I'm so excited because at the beginning of the episode, I told you I downloaded this workshop while I was in the bathtub and having this beautiful moment of serenity, which is when inspiration comes, right? Am I kidding? Am I? (laughs) I'm not kidding. (laughs) But can't you remember that when you've had your moments of greatest inspiration, it's when you were on a mountaintop hiking or you were in the shower, right? Or you were on a hike when you were outside. That's when you had the clarity, oh, I could write a book about X, Y, Z, right? Those moments of clarity and creativity happen when you're in a place of calm. Well, guess what? That can be available to you every single day. So I was telling you, I had this download in the bathtub for this workshop. And guess what that workshop is? It's the Reflect and Renew workshop that I'm offering to you on December 29th, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. It'll be about two, two and a half hours long. So make space in your calendar. Register for it, please, at reflectandrenew.life. So reflect a n d renew dot life, or find me on the bizofhappiness.com. On my my homepage, you'll see an opportunity to sign up for the workshop. Join me; it's free, and I'm really intending for this to be for all you coaches and consultants out there who have tried to leave one stressful situation, hoping that you are cultivating something new, and you're feeling the stress and pressure build up again. It's for anybody who's looking for calm and ease in 2024, who's looking for enormous success, but from a new calm, ease, flow, enjoyment, new definition of success. I can't wait to see you there. Check it out and let me know what you think of this episode. I would love that. If you've been listening to this and you've, some questions have come up for you or you thought, yeah, Taryn, this is not possible send me an email. I would love to continue this conversation. And as always, remember, when you feel good, that is when you can do good. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Business of Happiness podcast. If this episode brought you new perspective and value, I invite you to subscribe so that you catch all upcoming episodes and leave us a review. And if you know of a friend or colleague who could benefit from this perspective, share this episode with them and empower their day. For more information about the Business of Happiness and the Radical Happiness for Practitioners course, find me on www.thebizofhappiness.com. See you there.